Now, what can I tell you? Well, uh, first of all, are you uh, which? I'm Hanson. You're Hanson. This is Mr. Angra. 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 Mm -hmm. Glad to know you. With, uh, with the, the Air Force Office of Special Investigation. I'm the man you were talking to yesterday. God damn, that's impressive, isn't it? <laughs> Office of Special Investigation. <laughs> it just scare scare me to death. Well, mm -hmm. we don't want to scare you. <laughs> that's the least of our desires. But I'll tell you what we're here for. We, uh, we talked with Mr. Murphy out at the Ford Motor Company. Mm -hmm. And he said that uh, you had some old information and gadgets which you said uh, related to flying saucers and flying discs. Could you tell us something about that? Well, as far as gadgets, I don't have a thing to worry about it. Things that even pertain to them. I uh, know, thank you. I've been smoking. <clears throat> Uh, <coughs> as far as the flying saucers, what, are you on this uh, flying saucer story, are you? Is that the Well, no, you see, uh, as you probably know, the Air Force is denied it. investigates all reports of that type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've probably read the publicity that's been yeah. put out in connection with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever we hear of something like this, well, we track it to its source and see what how authentic it is, if at all. Well, tell me, how long have you been on this particular investigation? Well, we haven't given this thing much thought until just recently, and mm -hmm. we found that uh, Mr. Murphy got it uh, through a man by the name of Davis from you, and we'd like to see where you got it, or if it originated with you. Well, no, it did not originate with me. However, uh, the source that I got it at, I can't tell you, though I would like to. Uh, the spot where I get it is a very confidential spot. I believe that I am responsible, however, for uh, Murphy hearing about it through well, we as, through this uh, this deal of uh, what's it? What did you say his name was? Uh, Davies. Mm -hmm. It's possible that he could have told him. I don't know. Well, we uh, know that you told Mr. Murphy in the presence of other people. You didn't speak directly to him, but uh, you related your information in the presence of about five or six people connected with the Ford Motor Company. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, the actual, one of them that overheard it. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was about four, I believe, and Davies well, was one of them, Murphy and other. Uh, I think there was one man from out here along with you on that particular trip, isn't that right? Oh, we don't know that, who it was, but I think it, the way Mr. Murphy told us that uh, a friend of yours or another man from KMYR was out there with you at the time. Actually, I don't remember. Yes, yes, that's right. There was a fellow by the name of Holden Bowler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a new man starting here that I took out. How far have you gone with your investigation of this thing other than just contacting these few people? Well, we have officers all over the country. and uh, I see. What do you think of the flying saucer story? As well, far as you've gotten into it. I'll tell you, we're, we're over here to see what, what you know about it. <laughs> I see. In other words, you're not divulging any That's information. Right. Huh? No, we're not. Well, I'll tell you. What was told to me, frankly and honestly, was told in the strictest of confidence. Now, I don't believe that I have violated that confidence in any way, for the simple reason I have never mentioned any names, where I have got the information I've oh, got. You have mentioned names. Oh, have I? Uh, the story that we got now, uh, mm -hmm. like I say, we got a third hand, we're coming to you because you're the source of it. Mm -hmm. We would. Well, actually, I, to my knowledge, <coughs> have never mentioned any name, mm -hmm. nor do I intend to, to anyone. Now, the reason for that is this, and I think if you were put in my position, you'd feel the same identical way that I do. This was entrusted to me as a confidence. Now, the I have. The information that you uh, passed on to. Four or five other people? Not the the information? No, was not entrusted to me as a confidence, no. <clears throat> what was it? It was told to me as a story. However, the names where I got it from was entrusted to me as a confidence. Eh? And I have no, no desire to uh, jeopardize that confidence in any way, nor will I. Do you believe this story that uh, you related? 100 percent, yeah. You do? You feel that your source is, is so reliable that there's no question whatsoever 
as to the authenticity of the information. I think that's right, yeah. Well, I'd like to make our position clear to you, Mr. Uh, Caller. You can just call me George. There's no All necessity right. for this Mr. Okay. stuff. Okay, George. <laughs> I uh, prefer it that way. See, we, we have a job to do. In other words, we're, we're employed by the government, and we're working for the government, digging out these, these facts. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason behind it all. Well, oh, I imagine there wouldn't be or you wouldn't be here, that's for right. sure. Now, mm -hmm. now, if uh, anyone has any information, regardless of how slight it might be, and we go out and get these little, gather these bits of information, remember everything that we get and other agents throughout the country goes to one central head. And there it is evaluated and pieced together. Mm -hmm. Now, if there is anything at all uh, to all this flying saucer, you know, I wish to heaven you'd you'd have come in yesterday. I mean this seriously. Well, I tried to. I and uh, here's the reason I wish you had. There was a man by the name of Kehoe down here to talk to me. Have you ever heard of him? Kehoe. Donald Kehoe. No, it's. Strange. He wrote a very very fascinating article in True Magazine. I read that. Mm -hmm. Well, he's the author of it, and he was down here talking to me. He said that he heard through someone who heard from somebody else that heard from somebody else that heard from somebody else that. I knew something about it, and I have told him just exactly what I've told you, that I know absolutely nothing under the sun about what he was talking about. Right? But uh, then he went into the long detail about his article and all the information he had gathered, and of course the Air Force denial of the thing, and uh, then he asked me if I had ever seen this new article in Variety. Scully scrap latest issue yes. so I went out and I bought that thing that thing <laughs> I went out to, to get it yesterday and I I don't believe it's up here have you boys read it no. I know of the article and I haven't read it mm -hmm. yet well it uh, it's an extremely good article in other words it asks you fellas 20 questions of the Air Force mm -hmm. and uh, I believe it's just waiting for another denial that's about what it amounts to but the facts that he includes in this thing are actually startling. That's why one of the reasons I wished you were here because Kehoe was up here at the time and he was trying to explain a few of them to me. And it was very, very enlightening conversation with a man. And in fact, uh, he had just left when you boys had come up here. And then when I called back, I was out of the office and I tried to get him again, but he had, uh, he went to uh, Montana. Uh, Butte, Montana or somewhere I believe and uh, I was going to try to get him and I thought we'd all have a talk like yesterday mm -hmm. but uh, and then this fellow that just called me a few seconds ago uh, just asked me the same question that you've asked me now I don't even I can't remember his name but he was from Kansas City Star his name was Champ uh, Lewis or something like yeah, that. Yeah Kansas City Star carried the story as you told it and so happened now I'll, I'll give you this information to give you a little background at the time that you related your story at the uh, Ford Motor Company then on out to the airport and so on, you probably remember that, don't you? You had dinner and... Not out to the airport, no. You didn't go as far as the airport. Well, I, I don't know anything about this. Well, Rudy Fick, I understand, was in from out of town. Right. Isn't that right? He that's carried yeah. the story back to Kansas. Uh -huh. Kansas City he, uh, Rudy Fick got the story, all of the story, from Murphy, didn't he? No, he was, uh, he was uh, president. Well, I mean, we just talked about bits of it at lunch, say, just very small bits of it. In fact, he had about 18 minutes to make the plane and have lunch, so you figure out how much conversation we had. Well, that's right. That's but he said Murphy, when I walked in there, that Murphy had had a long meeting with him. They were discussing this thing. And uh, I said, oh, is that so? And then we picked up little bits of it as he went along. And that was all that, uh, that transpired. And we had lunch out at Park Hill or some golf yeah, club like that, you know. And then the boys left, and I was not with them from then on. I had uh, this new man with me, and I took him out to uh, old few accounts that we have. You know. Well, did this did this source of yours, of, for, of your information, ever give you any uh, parts in this particular? No. Huh. No. What about the uh, gadget that you had over at the Ford place? Is that what is that a joke or? Pulling gadgets, or something. gadgets that I had at the Ford place. Yeah. Well, I'd have to deny that I ever had any. Okay. Well. 
Well, look, George, uh, we don't care whether if you're having a, a lot of fun with this thing or not. No, but, uh, no. We would if you tell us. Frankly, it's past the fun stage. This goddamn thing is just doing nothing but taking up a lot of my time. Now, I have more time than most ordinary men have, but that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just can't go running off all over the country to to meet with these guys and uh, and talk about this thing. In other words, I've got a job to do here, and I've got a lot more important things to do. And everybody wants a story, and everybody wants information, and so on. Now, I was told the Monday of this week that I know absolutely nothing. Now, believe me when I say I'm not trying to be facetious or nasty to you. I'm not that kind of a fellow. You say you you were told that you know. That's right. I don't know a thing. Who told you that? The same source. Oh, yeah. your source. That's right. I don't know, should we refer to him as a source or the boys? I mean, it don't make any difference to me. But that is the only way I have ever referred to them. Now, as far as giving names, that I have never done. Well, have you ever, uh, according to the story, the way we get it, mm -hmm. that you have uh, claimed to have seen these things? Is that oh, true? Yeah. That you have no. claimed that? No. No, I have never seen them. I wonder what the hell it looked like if I did see one. Well, you probably know that when uh, when a story gets handed down from person to person, it's altered and added to and subtracted mm -hmm. from and everything else. I have given just what few facts that I have heard myself, say. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as me ever seeing one, no, I've never seen one. However, we have a boy working here who has seen them in the air, he claims. Mm -hmm. Well, there's lots of people all over That's the country right. that claim that. Mm -hmm. In fact, we got a picture that a man took yesterday, which he claims was one. There's a uh, movie showing in New York at the Rialto Theater, I understand, that opened Monday. That's called The Flying Saucer, see? And as it goes through the story, why it shows a little dot in the sky, and they say that's a flying saucer. Mm -hmm. It's put out by MGM or something, but it's, uh, to my knowledge, it's just a lot of... All right, how about uh, any of these questions I ask you, you're certainly free, you know, to tell me they don't care to answer it. Uh, your source... Is the source connected with the government in any way, or is it a private party? Frankly, I'm not free to answer that question. All right, the reason I'm getting at that is that any information pertaining to flying saucers certainly uh, has no business being in the hands of a private individual. Do you, you think that's right? Do you think that I... any one person should decide whether he should retain such information or that it should be turned over to the proper authorities? I believe that the government is the only one that should have any answers to, to this story. And I believe that the government is making a huge mistake in not giving the true facts about the goddamn thing as they know it. And I'll tell you why I feel that way. I might be a little bit different than anybody else. I don't know. But you know this wonderful country of ours, the United States, has taken this so-called atomic age without any hysteria whatsoever. And if there is an interplanetary age as uh, all these magazine articles, newspaper articles, and supposedly these true fact articles, if it is right, I think they're going to take it in the same columnist that they've taken the atomic age. Probably so. I honestly believe it. Now, I'll tell you, this thing fascinates me. Just fascinates me because I want to know more about it continually. And I think everyone in the United States feels the same goddamn way about it. I don't know why they shouldn't. Now, why the hell don't the government release this information? Don't you feel? I mean, you're you're a, a normal, intelligent human being. Well, how would you take this thing? Well, George, I'll tell you now. This the story that. Are you aware of the story that was printed in the Kansas City paper? No. Uh -uh. Well, now that's so much value. You see, mm -hmm. now uh, certainly the government won't release value. As Why they'd be damn fools to. That's right. That's right. So, but they know, certainly should release some facts of the thing, don't you believe? Well, at, at this stage, a, a release has been made, and uh, all claims to uh, citing these saucers and so on—that is all—it's all been explained in some manner or another. It's all been explained, but if you'll pardon me, it hasn't been explained to my satisfaction. I mean, the only article that I've ever read is from over the UP and AP wire here, mm -hmm. where the Air Force where no particular man they denies the entire story they claim that 
<laughs> they just don't exist. People are having hallucinations. Well, now, people don't have hallucinations. Not well, this many not, people. They're not all explained as hallucinations. It's on a percentage basis. That's right. Some of them they claim were meteorites and so on. Phenomena and so on. Yeah, that's what you claim. However, in the entire article of, of uh, your denial, it doesn't give any particular man's name as to denying this entire thing. See? I wonder why. All right. Uh, let me put, put it this way to you. Uh, we have felt that it was important enough to talk to you to see what information you had. Something has led us to you, an allegation mm. that you had information. All right. Now, you uh, don't want to give us your source. Now, the government certainly... There isn't a question of my giving you your source. What would you do in my in my position? What would you do in my position? May I ask I, you? Huh? Would you betray that confidence? If I gave you an opinion there, huh? I'd probably say, well, I'd give you the source. You, you'd say what I'd I do? I would say that I would reveal my source and let the uh, people who are involved in this business track it all down. Yeah, now, let, let me tell you what the next step would be. If you tell us your source, someone would contact the source and get the meat of the information that your source has. If you mean it is not the source, it would go to the next one. So you'd track it down to its last final point, to its origin. You mean that the Air Force knows nothing of these of these ships now? Oh, the Air Force gets reports from all over the country on all matters pertaining to this. Mm -hmm. And it has tracked them all down in one form or another. Mm -hmm. All right, now the, the full information, I won't even say that I know it all. Mm -hmm. but they don't notify me from Washington. No, I, the latest I, stories. I didn't imagine they would. Well, I'm just a little guy yeah. that's digging out another story. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought that evaluating uh, everything, you see. I thought though that they would give you a, oh, oh shall we say, a thumbnail sketch of the entire thing as oh, yes, as you know it to be now. We're kept abreast of the situation generally, but not in detail. That's mm -hmm. that's certainly true. Well, do you believe it yourself? Just between you and I, I mean, I, I don't make a damn bit of difference whether you tell me well, or because I, if I tell you that if I tell somebody that the some of the Air Force boys are here, they tell me they believe it. Why, well, uh, it would be just another story. Well, that's what? it. I don't want. I don't want that to happen. So <laughs> I, I prefer not to comment on that. I see. Uh, well, frankly, I do believe it, one hundred percent. And as I say, I believe that every American in the United States is going to take it calmly, without any great reaction. And there's no reason in the world why. Okay, George, how about how about uh, setting you straight on this now? Uh, Fred Unger and myself were over talking to Mr. Murphy yesterday. And uh, I don't want to say that Mr. Murphy was handing me a line, and I want to believe what you tell me. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you that I am led to believe that you had some gears and a couple of little chunks of metal that you, in your possession at the time you wrote it. Now, is that true or untrue or what? Well, let's say that I just refuse to comment on that particular question right now. Okay. I do not have the gears. You don't have them. I do not have... Well, did you have them there or not? <laughs> All right, let's quit hedging. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, as I said, I don't have the gears. Or pieces of metal. I'll tell you what somebody did do. Well, this is the goddamn thing you ever heard of. And this was just the other day. That a letter came to me... No, thank you, I don't smoke. From... Uh, Boulder, Colorado, eh? mm -hmm. with two little discs in it, aluminum discs, that said, does this metal resemble that of yours? Eh? I don't even know what he's talking about. I got it in my coat pocket. In other words, somebody else knows that you have some information or believes that you have some. Or Must some believe that I have some information. And they want to compare notes with you. To see Apparently so. But the goddamn thing wasn't signed. <laughs> And say, where is this the postmark? See, postscript on it. Said uh, Boulder, Colorado. Well. Or maybe somebody's trying to give me the straight picture. I'll tell you, you haven't read this article of Frank Scully, huh? No, no, I think now, I God will. damn it. Now, I suggest you do, because I think it has a great deal of information. And any man, see, 
who has that much information about this thing. He must know all the answers. But George, you'll admit that, that anything that smacks of flying saucers is, is going to sell. I mean, that's something that you can appeal to the public with right now. Do you know that two magazines have been after me to give them information and a story? And you know what I've told both of them? Three of them, as a matter of fact. You know what? I have to tell three of them. I'm sorry. I don't have any information. Can you an arrange an, a meeting? See? Can you arrange a meeting whereby we can get this information? No. I can't. Yet I know that one magazine in particular has offered thousands and thousands of dollars for this thing. See? And have offered me the same thing. Sure, and I sent the man away yesterday. Now, I can use $5,000 awful goddamn well, but I had to send the son of a bitch away. See? That's pretty rough. When you Boy, that's rough as hell. Dollar dollar. That's <laughs> rough. That's goddamn rough. Of course, I can't prove anything that I say. I can give them, possibly, facts that in later years will prove to be exacting facts, yes, but who the hell am I? I'm George Kohler, a goddamn time salesman for KMYR. See? Mm -hmm. That's your position, you sell time That's on the radio. That's right, I sell time on the radio, yeah. Have you been with the outfit very long? About a year and a half. Yeah, about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Almost two years. Pretty good job? No. You know the brain? Mac, I sure do. I think he's a very nice fellow. Very nice he's fellow. Street, oh, is that right? Yeah, Mac is an awful. He left here about a year ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. He's with Magruder Agency now. I like Mac very much. Very much. Very conscientious, a damn fine radio man. But he was in a different end of it than I am here. See, Mac was a program director. Mm -hmm. How's radio here? Then pretty good? Uh, referring to what? The programming or I the mean, sales of it? or? Well, I mean, how, how is it as a business? Is it as a business, it's very good, very good. I have been exceptionally, oh, I would say lucky, uh, lucky and fortunate. <laughs> do you uh, do your own selling? That is, you contact individuals who you feel might be sponsors. On these that's right, that's right. That's my job. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Lead you to meet a lot of interesting people. It does a lot of interesting people. It's a great deal of interesting people. I enjoy the job a whole lot, mainly because I guess I'm just naturally lazy. I don't know. I don't like working too hard. But frankly, I believe that I've done a very outstanding job here. I think anybody will tell you that. And I just like it. Anything you like, goddamn, you can excel in, is what I've found out. Well, they judge you by your sales volume. That's right. Mm -hmm. Is that your connection with Davis through the Ford plant? That, uh, you sell I sell signs? Morley B. Davies' time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's the agent for Ford. He is the J. Walter Thompson representative for the Ford Motor Company for the entire United States. Oh, I see. One of the representatives. Let's put yeah, it that way. Yeah, he's the, the Western. That's right. Probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Davies apparently uh, has heard any comment that you made on this uh, saucer business, too, Eddie. I would have say. You, have you told him any, any of it at all from time to time? Mentioned Davies has, I would say, heard the entire story. Yeah. Well, the story we got was that you had actually seen these things. Oh, Christ. Hell no. Mm -hmm. Well, if you had seen one and had picked it up as the story went on... Brother, if I had seen one... We want to talk to If I had seen one, eh? And seen the occupants in the room. You think I let that fellow walk out of here yesterday with five thousand dollar check to me? You don't blame us for coming to see you. I mean, no, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Somebody tells us that George Kohler has seen those damn things, but we want to see George Kohler. <laughs> and you want to see him too, don't you? <laughs> in fact, when you get these things, you can just come down here and get me by the hand and lead me to it, and I'll be forever grateful. Baby. <laughs> but the sightings. Of these ships. In fact, I'll tell you a little story that will really raise your hair. About four months ago, so the story goes, that within 65 miles from here, one of these things is supposed to have landed. Right? And two little girls saw the goddamn thing. 
as the story goes, ran in to tell their grandmother. Okay? By the time they convinced their grandmother, the grandmother came out and looked at the garden and think it was gone. She the grandmother didn't see anything. But that was just another natural phenomenon, don't you think? Well, George, uh, how big was the girl? Kids have imagination, you know. Yeah, that's right. That, that's what it's most likely what it was. Suggestion, you know, you know, it could be. There's a fellow who's our program director here. I was driving in northern Colorado, a big part in southern Colorado, with his mother. They saw him flying around in the sky. And he's a very, very reputable young man. I put a lot of stock in what he says. But it must have been another one of those goddamn natural phenomena, I guess. Well, if he uh, saw one, we'd certainly be glad to, to uh, jot down any description that you may have or anything like that. Is he here in the office now? No. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd well, uh, like to hear his story on it. <laughs> Go ahead and work, Gene Amel. He apparently isn't here right now. He's most likely out making a remote somewhere. We do quite a bit of that. Well, he'll be back in a few minutes. But really, fellas, as I said, I don't want you to take any offense to me. Well, we're not, this, George. We're, we're, because we're, if we're, it were we're just about, oh, let's say a month ago, and you wanted some information, so help me, Christ, I'd have given you anything you want. But I think that you understand my position now. And I just can't give any information. In fact, when people come up to me and start talking about flying discs, you know what I tell them? I say, oh, geez, don't bother me with that stuff anymore, will you? I'm just so goddamn sick of it. I just don't have time for it. Now, that's right. I have people calling me up like this. A fellow I talked to as you were sitting there, thing, just as you walked in the door from Kansas City. And he said, I understand that, that you know a great deal about this thing, thing. that you are a, an authority on this. I said, that's a lot of crap, fellow. I don't know anything about it. Thing. Because I'm just sick of it. I'm just fed up with it right now. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Well, I guess it could kind of grow on you. Yeah, it could. Of course, believe me, it's the most fascinating subject that I have ever found or ever yeah. been able to talk about. Well, George, you know, it's the next step anyhow. The world has been conquered as far as travel throughout the world. So if you want to go someplace new, you got to get outside, don't you? <laughs> well, there's still a lot of places in this world I haven't seen. I'm going to be satisfied to well, see Well, I mean, not, <laughs> not, not as an individual, uh, it hasn't been conquered, but mankind in general. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Also, transportation can take you any, any part of it now, and all the way around it, probably, without setting foot on land. The next step is move out. Well, I believe I read an article here not so long ago that said that we are making plans at the present time to visit the moon in about 30 years, right here in the United States. Yeah, I saw a yeah. newspaper article on that. So, uh, it's possible, I don't know. Frankly, I wouldn't want to be one of the first. Well, these stories, uh, the plans naturally have to precede any action on it. Frankly, I believe if I saw one of these flying discs, I'd be the biggest goddamn coward of any of us. I don't think I'd go near the son of a bitch for sheer fright. Hey. Well, certainly. I mean, I'm just like, uh, oh, there was a boy who was talking to me years and years ago about a fella come in to hold him up, see? I put that gun in his face and that fella said, I just took a poke right in his mouth. I said, is that right? God damn, that's a lot of guys. And about two weeks later, I'm held up, see? And that guy held that gun in front of my face, and that son of a bitch looked like I could just crawl right down the barrel. I could see the bottom of it, see? <laughs> so I got big and tough and strong, too. And you know what I said to the man? Every goddamn thing he said to me, I said one thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And, yes. and then when that son of a bitch left, I had a cold sweat, and I shook for about ten minutes later. I couldn't even tell the police what happened. Eh? <laughs> so this bastard who was telling me about this poke he took at this guy, he's a liar, son of a bitch, for my money. I think so, I'd be inclined to do the same thing. I, I could make more money someday. But <laughs> <laughs> so that's the same way I feel about this flying disc thing. I'm not too anxious to... Oh, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see the so-called occupants. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know how it's operated. I know approximately how it's operated now. But I'd like all of the things in concrete evidence right before me. Sitting there in front of you. Like that's right. Piano. 
But I'm not too anxious to take a good one, so it's <laughs> you don't want to ride That's what we came here to see. That's what you came here. You thought I had it in my pocket, huh? No, yeah. not one of the machines, but we understood you had some parts from it. No, I don't have any parts from it. <clears throat> well, you don't blame us for coming in here to see you. And not at all, and you're more than welcome at any time. Okay, George. Well, enjoyed talking to you. I'm glad I enjoyed talking you to you, too. Gave us some of your time to talk this over. As I said, time is one thing I have one hell of a lot of. <laughs> Okay, then we'll... If there was any information, right. believe me, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. All right. It's well, nice knowing you. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you, too. Thanks a lot. Tell McGrain I'm going to see him sometime today. Saw you. Okay. <laughs> Magnetic hysteresis occurs when a ferromagnetic substance is subjected to a varying magnetic field and causes the magnetic induction to lag behind the changes in magnetizing force. Magnetic analysis. The separation of a stream of electrified particles by a magnetic field in accordance with their mass, charge, or speed. This is the principle of the mass spectrograph. Magnetic declination. The angle between true north, geographical, and magnetic north, the direction of the compass needle. This angle is different for different places and changes continuously with respect to time. Magnetic dip. The angle that the magnetic field of the Earth makes with the horizontal at a particular location, also called magnetic inclination. Magnetic field a vector field of magnetizing force. As generally used, a magnetic field indicates the region throughout which the magnetizing force values are of significant magnitude with respect to the conditions under consideration. In effect, a magnetic field is any region in which the magnetic forces created by a permanent magnet or by a current carrying conductor or coil can be detected. Magnetic figures, a pattern showing the distribution of a magnetic field made by sprinkling iron filings on a non-magnetic surface in the field. Magnetic flux, magnetic lines of force. Magnetic flux density, the magnetic quantity, number of magnetic lines of force that determines how much voltage will be induced in a conductor moving through a particular point in a magnetic field. It is the number of magnetic lines of force per unit area at right angles to the lines, more generally called magnetic induction. Magnetic lines of force, imaginary lines used for convenience to represent the direction in which magnetic forces are acting in a magnetic field and to represent the strength of the magnetic field. Magnetic pole, one. Either of the two poles of a magnet, North Pole and South Pole, near which the magnetic intensity is greatest. Two, either of two locations on the surface of the Earth towards which a compass needle points. The North Magnetic Pole is near the North Geographic Pole and hence attracts the South Pole of a compass needle. Magnetic storm, rapid and erratic changes in the strength of the magnetic field of the Earth believed due to activity on the sun. It seriously affects both radio and wire communications. Law of magnetism. Like poles repel, unlike poles attract. Magnetron, a high vac vacuum thermionic tube in which a magnetic field externally produced by a coil surrounding the tube is used to control the unidirectional current flow. It is used for generating microwaves, radio waves below one meter in wavelength. In a split anode magnetron, the cylindrical anode that surrounds the cathode is divided longitudinally into halves between which the oscillations are produced. In large magnetrons, handling powers up to about a thousand kilowatts, continuous oscillations are produced in the plate circuit at twice the frequency of the high frequency alternating field provided by the filament without the use of a grid.
he succeed in establishing a new church. Thank God for their...